I'm curious. I don't think I'm even going to know all the answers to these questions. What piece of equipment or object do you consider essential for travel gear? I think you know what Ross is, so I'm going to say something different. Mine is a coat from always called, or just always called, like layers and layers. And Janelle gave me the awesome idea um, on the trip that we just went on to go to Uniqlo and get this like under layer. Um, and that was like shirt and pants so that it was really easy to layer underneath even jeans and I didn't have to take my more back in space because I like taking a lot of shoes. <laughs> Mine is, um, I, I, we, we stumbled across a fellow traveler on a trip that had a Wi-Fi hotspot with them. It was like a puck that they could carry and then your phone could just like hop on the Wi-Fi that they had. And we, we ended up traveling a lot with like finding maps and like where can we get from here to there. And we do a fair amount of planning actually, but inevitably like try to change things last minute and not necessarily being able to count on what the market or phones carriers can provide or pay for that. And it was like seven or eight dollars a day to have advice that didn't just let me on, but her and, and her good and generous said, hey, you're stuck, can't get on anything. Um, and then it also uses a different battery than your phone, so it kind of allowed you to have double, double the data time. So we ended up traveling a lot and utilizing our phones, and that was a little handy way to do it. Okay. Well, that's it. So it's like a rentable Wi-Fi hotspot. You rent one in the country you go to? You yeah. One you rent it here. Yeah, and what's the we actually, we rent it. How do you get it? Oh, her question. Yeah, um, how do you get the Wi-Fi, the rentable Wi-Fi? Um, it, we actually, Rob looks around, you usually get it at the airport, and so it's really easy actually to get it at the airport you land in. Um, and if you're going somewhere like Europe and a few destinations within Europe, it seems like you can usually pick it up when you arrive in Europe and go multiple places in Europe and um, then drop it off before you come back to the U.S. and Rob can probably say better than I can. And someone might just ship up to you, and then you're like, as long as you don't turn it on until you get to your destination, turn it off when you leave, they don't charge you for extra days. Yeah, and to be fair, we, we got one when we were in, in Spain, and then we had to, um, we checked it out in Spain, and we couldn't get it at the airport, actually, but there were separate locations. And then we went over to Marrakesh, which is clearly Africa and not Europe, and um, they, when we checked it out in, in Barcelona, they gave us two different ones, and said, well, here are two different ones, you use this one, and in Europe and then turn it off before you leave the country and then turn this one on once you get to Africa and you can use that when you get there. So even even with that, going to two different places, needing two different Wi-Fi pops, they supply those all in one place and we didn't have to worry about that. When did you first fall in love with traveling? So I had a business trip that sent me to Singapore and the customer was like, you know, they're doing IT stuff, whatever. The customers have ordered too much dinner. And I had the most amazing dinner experience I've ever had in my entire life, probably to this day. And I, I have like very little idea, it's been 20 years, um, where they, where we were in Singapore, but it was amazing. And I was like, wow, this country is unbelievable. And I don't think I can replicate this here. So I think that's kind of the first thing that's like, there's amazing things out there, and we just don't know about it. And it unlocked that for me. Uh, I think I'm probably not the only one in the room who would say this. I fell in love with traveling before I did it. Um, I, I was an avid reader growing up, and, and we did family trips uh, and whatnot, and uh, we did, I did travel internationally as a kid, but even before I did that, I wanted to go everywhere. <laughs> so, books. <laughs> if you could travel with any historic figure, where would you go and with whom? Can it be historical yeah. time? Okay. I would go to the Moulin Rouge with um, probably Toulouse Lautrec, but maybe um, La Goulou, which is like the main dancer that he painted. So um, I'm named after Robert the Bruce, so I have to go to Scotland and check that out. <laughs> so cost and time, no object. Where would you go and for how long? Uh, I got an email from my son um, last week, who's in, he's in New York City, he's 22, and it was like, congratulations, you have uh, received your visa for um, a year-long stay or whatever, like work, work visa to New Zealand. So that's kind of stuck in my head. It's like, wow, that seems like a long time, and money, but I'm like, right now, what do I do? I, 
Yeah, I can't even. <laughs> I, I, um, I, I do value coming back and sort of uh, grooming in at home, and I really love here as my grooming space. Um, but I, I think really ideally time in my annual project, I, I would plan something that's two years long that allows me to come back here for a month and then travel for two maybe, and back here for a month, and I would just really go everywhere. I, there's not a place I don't, I'm not interested in going. What advice would you give people about traveling? I think for me, it's something I still wrestle with, which is, um, and I'm, I'm sure that you all have found this, but for me, it's really being in the moment because I don't want to miss anything so much so that I get so stressed out that I'm going to miss something that I start missing the thing I'm doing right now. <laughs> and so for me, it's really, constant challenge of living in the moment and being like this thing that I'm doing is the thing that I'm doing and it's amazing and when I go home this will be enough uh, even if it's not every single thing I could have done. When Mandy and I travel I think a lot of times ahead of time we'll spend uh, a fair amount of time on organizing a spreadsheet about like all right we're going to be there on these days we're going to fly in at this time fly out at that time and we'll try to plan uh, some things for maybe like what can we do in the evening? What can we kind of do in the middle of the day? And then there's like kind of a cadre of other items that are like, well, if we can fit it in, these, these would be great. Like there's some things you just like, I gotta do this, and there's some things that are, will, are, are nice. Um, if we can make it work, we'll do that too. So I think what that does maybe for what you're saying too is you show up and you've got a bit of a plan, um, you know you're gonna hit some high spots, and you've got enough of an other plan that you're not like sitting in a hotel going, oh, I wish I figured out some things to do. Um, the other piece of advice that I kind of quickly put on the end of that is, um, we found this, we Airbnb our place in Denver here, we found Airbnb experiences last time we went on a trip and we ended up doing an Airbnb tour of um, this market in Marrakesh or, or maybe it was actually the Barcelona thing that kind of tipped it off and we were like, this is really great and it's the uh, person, it's local that's doing it, it's not a corporation or something, so we're having a real conversation with the person and at the end of the night he said, well, if you have any other advice and you know, feel free to reach out to me the rest of the week where we're leaving tomorrow, if we've known that you existed at the beginning of our trip, or we've gotten all this information about the things you've shown us, we would have gone to way more things. So then when we went to Marrakesh, we hit that sort of like, let's do the big broad spectrum tour with someone that's from there um, on the front side of it. So we have the rest of the days to then maybe do the thing that we saw, like, oh, this is really great, or you're here with this, and if they're a nice personal person that has to answer a bunch of questions for us. So um, if you haven't checked that out yet, I don't know if it's, we, I mean, we literally did like five or six of them the last time we were on a trip, and um, they were reasonably priced, and people were giving us food and, and free stuff all along the way. So I had good advice, too. And that's, it, just because he didn't say, that's, you go onto the Airbnb site, and they have, I think it's called Homes, is one of the tabs, or the little buttons at the top, and the other um, button or tab is called Experiences. Um, and it, oh my gosh, like, that was really some of our favorite things from this last trip, and it's the first time we found it, and we will keep doing that so much. Thank you so much. Run applause for Andy Brown.